How's it going everyone? Got another video here with the Model 3 and we're doing some more sound system stuff with the car. I mentioned at the end of the last video that this setup has some issues and I mentioned a little bit about the DC to DC converter being an issue. So we're kind of going to break it down in this video, explain briefly what's going on. All my parts arrived today. So hopefully everything that we need to fix this issue is already here. We just got to do the work and uh, get the wiring done. But I guess uh, let's get into it. I just want to pick up where we left off in the last one. I mentioned that the DC to DC converter has an issue. So this car doesn't have an alternator because it doesn't have an engine with an alternator set up like a typical car does. This has a very large battery pack that's used for operating the motor in the rear of the car. And then it has a, that converter, the DC to DC converter, takes the high voltage that's in the battery pack, brings it down to 12 volts, and then lets the 12 volt side of the car operate things. So your headlights, your tail lights, any plate lights, interior lights, your wiper motors, your window motors, all that stuff is still 12 volt. It's just an industry standard to have things be 12 volt operated especially in cars, and that's just where we still are. So the issue we're having is I run my air compressor for the air ride system, and I run this amplifier off of the main outputs from the DC to DC converter. Rather than running everything off from the 12 volt battery, because it's just very small, you can drain it. And I think that the battery management system in this car will know that there's an excessive draw on that battery. Uh, just from research I've done. So people say to run it right off the DC to DC converter because the battery management system doesn't, it's not metered yet. On that 350 watt amplifier I had in here before and the air compressor, I never had any issues, but now that I'm running a bigger audio amplifier, it also has bigger capacitors. The capacitors are basically the big issue here because when the DC to DC converter shuts down, all the 12 volt going to the amplifier shuts off. So when the car goes into a deep sleep, the 12 volt system gets shut off just to make sure there's no current draw. But when you turn the car back on, what happens is the amplifier's capacitors have drained out. When the DC to DC converter comes online, a big inrush of electricity comes from the converter to the amplifier to fill the capacitors back up. And that's where the problem is because the car thinks that there's something wrong with the converter so it basically just shuts the converter off and the 12 volt system won't work properly. It'll just work off the battery for a little bit and then you lose all your 12 volt, your car isn't gonna run, uh, you'll literally just be dead in the water. So the solution is running a 200 amp relay and turning on the amplifier after the DC to DC converter has finished coming online and we won't have that big inrush of electricity when it first turns on. So now that that's kind of explained for you guys, it's a little long-winded, but I feel like it's pretty important just so everyone understands what's going on. Here's the relay. And then basically what you do is you take the two power signals and you bridge them. You literally just connect them, but you put a resistor in line. So when the DC to DC converter comes online, after you wake the car up, it'll start flowing a small amount of electricity through this resistor and it will slowly charge the capacitors in the amplifier. Then once the capacitors are fully charged, the big inrush of electricity stops, the DC to DC converter says, okay, everything's normal. And then you can operate it and it won't use this anymore. It'll just use the relay and uh, use that 200 amp line. And with all that being said, we're basically backpedaling and we're going to be taking the amplifier and the LC2i out of the car, and we're gonna be building an amp rack. I don't love that the amplifier and that 200 amp relay and the LC2i Pro are mounted behind that carpet piece inside the quarter panel where there's no ventilation. I can't see it. I don't feel comfortable with all of that heat generating stuff in a small space that I can't access quickly and I can't see it. We're gonna take that stuff out of there. That setup used to be fine when it was on 350 watts and there was barely any heat generated from that amplifier. But now that this thing gets warm and uh, could potentially get hot, 
we're gonna take this piece of plywood here, we're gonna cut it up to the right size, build an amp rack. We're gonna probably put it in there so that when you fold the seats up, it's hiding the amplifiers, but when you fold them down, you can see the amplifier and all that other stuff. But in typical fashion, we're just gonna get to work. I'll set you guys up on a tripod and uh, kind of take you through what I'm doing. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get into it. I just want to jump in real quick, let you guys know. I'm trying to make this as best as I possibly can. That way, if there's like an instance where I have to take the subwoofer and amplifier rack out of the car, there is little disconnecting of things as possible. Basically, I've got a bunch of different wires here, just different colors, so it's easier to kind of keep track of things. We're gonna wire this all up, do as much as we can on this amp rack, and then we'll basically take it, put it in the car behind the subwoofer box, and it should just be hooking up the power wire and stuff. And then I hope we're back to uh, having some subwoofers in the car.
just like that, the amp rack is done. I wish it took as little time as the video makes it seem, but this board lining this up and doing all this stuff probably took me like four hours of actual work. I started earlier this afternoon, was on this for probably at least two hours, and then we went out to eat. I came back and it's been at least another two hours. It's pretty much ready to go in the car. I have some stuff I wanna do on the back side of it. There's some staples and stuff that stick through and some screws and stuff. So I wanna cut them all out just to make sure that if you're handling the board, getting it in or out of the car, that you don't cut yourself or drag it on some interior bit and rip it. But this is what it looks like and I'm super stoked with how it come out. Now that the amp rack is all done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reassemble the rear of the car again. So where that amp and the LC2i Pro used to mount, I'm gonna put that plastic panel back in its place, get the carpet and everything back here. And then um, I guess what we can do is just start getting the front part of the trunk ready to put the amp rack in it. I've been working for a little while now. I got the amp rack completely in the car. I just have to put ends on the leads coming from the subwoofer box because I'm gonna have a connector between the subwoofer box and the amplifier. And I gotta do the same thing for the input, which is the signal wire coming from the subwoofer on the door and it comes back here. I'm gonna put connectors on those as well so I can disconnect the amp rack from that signal source. And then I think we'll be ready to pick the seats up and hook the power wire for the amp rack up to the DC to DC converter. time has come everything is 100% hooked up I guess uh, we're gonna find out if this works I'm gonna uh, hit the brake pedal that should start the car and we'll uh, see what happens worst case is it pops that fuse I hit the brake pedal and the car turned on but nothing happened so my theory right now is that the LC2Y turn on wires are in the wrong position. The speaker inputs are on the right and I'm not sure if they need to be on the left, but we're gonna switch those around and see if it turns on. It's the following day. It was like 2.30 by the time I got to bed last night but I wanted to jump back in and give you an update. When I put the foot brake on last night, the car did not give power to the amplifier, but the LC2i Pro had power to it after I switched the speaker inputs. After playing around with the multimeter a little bit, what I figured out was 
the amp draw to activate that 200 amp relay has to be too much for the LC2i Pro to handle. I read somewhere that that 200 amp relay required like 0.3 amps to turn it on and I couldn't find what the LC2i Pro output power is, but what I ended up doing is running a smaller relay that the LC2i Pro goes into, activates the relay, then the high power from the relay activates the low power on the 200 amp relay. So it's a double relay system, but it works and is exactly what it's supposed to. It looks pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm decently happy with it. The main thing is the car actually does exactly what it's supposed to do now. All in all, like I said, I'm really happy this does exactly what it needs to now. The small relay was a little twist in my plans, but it all worked out. The resistor seems to be powering the amplifier's capacitors perfectly, and then the 200 amp relay comes online when it's supposed to, so couldn't be more happy with it. The sound system works, and now the car's reliable. I appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, watching me build that amp rack. That I realistically have probably like six hours of time in that thing. It's just absolutely insane. Stay tuned for the next one. The next video, we're actually taking the Nova to the drag strip. So if you guys liked the content when we took the Nova to the drag strip last time, stay tuned. In three days, that video will be out for you guys. We're going to take it to a little car show tonight in town. So I guess that's going to do it. See you guys.